there and welcome to The Thrones Show, entertainment.ie's Game of Thrones review show. So there is a lot to unpack from this episode, but your initial reaction. Game of Thrones is back. We've been a year and a half waiting Woo. for this. What did you think of the opening episode? Dave, I'll go to you first. I thought it was a bit rushed, if I'm honest. Really? Um, yeah, well, it's it's hard to tell, I suppose, considering there are only six episodes, they need to move things along quickly. Uh, but yeah, I, I even found the last 12, I think about 12, 13 minutes left, I remember like going, how long is left? Uh, really? Yeah. I was but so sad think, when it ended. I thought it was brilliant. <laughs> I think it kicked up a notch yeah. Yeah. thereafter, but at, up to that point, I was like, all right, I get it. Okay. We all are seeing each other for the first time in a while. Oh, I haven't seen yeah. you in a while either. I think they just had so much to get through and so many characters to link in and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, I thought they set it up pretty well. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't... Compared to the finale of the last season, and even the last two or three episodes of the last season, they were like, whoa! So this was a bit more establishing. But we all know there's like a big out fight coming regardless. So yeah, I kind of yeah. enjoyed it for that. I thought it was good in that a lot of the Game of Thrones opening episodes kind of set the scene. And yeah. they've kind of had to do all these character interactions and character reunions and setting it all up because if they just dove straight into it, I mean, it is a year and a half since the last season. I suppose they are aware of that, so they almost have to give us a little bit of a refresher and a reminder of like where everyone's at, um, which is handy now because they're just all at Winterfell. Yeah, <laughs> seriously, yeah, over at King's that, Landing. It's. I look at it from the perspective that the previous episodes had establishing episode, or the previous series had establishing episodes. But they were all eight, nine, ten episodes long. This is six episodes. Yeah, so like, yeah. We don't need and it, like it's eight seasons or however long in. We don't need, we know who they are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just Did you just notice uh, <laughs> when uh, they were doing all the political talk, Bran was just like, we don't have time for this. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my favorite moments. They all gather and it's like, no, no, there's no time. The Night King is coming on his dragon. He has your dragon. And yet he says this with such urgency and somehow they're all still like, just dolloping yeah. around the whole episode, like going off on little dragon adventures. Yeah. Um, yeah, they had time for a sweet like romance bit. I know. That's what my question throughout all of this has always been like, how do they know the pace of the Night King and the army because even in the seventh season they go back and have we find out the Night King is on its way but they seem to just be reliant on the fact that like he'll just they'll let us know yeah. when he shows up you know it's they're sort slow of walkers, how slow they? are Very they methodical. I know they're dead but yeah it's kind of varied hasn't it but like it's always so hard to know the timelines with all these things anyway it's yeah. always jumping around so much and I think the last season especially is just going to be all over the shop with like speeding up things, people going on big journeys and just arriving and all this kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the main talking point, of course, has to be this seven season long build up up to Jon Snow's lineage. He finally knows. He finally knows. Yeah. We all kind of yeah. knew for ages, but anyway, he knows now. Yeah, it's it's going to be a quite, a quite an interesting development because obviously he's always been the one who makes the sensible decisions and stuff, but now that he has this relationship with Danny and it's like, Almost the way Sam put that question to him of, you know, you were willing to do what it takes to step aside from a crown for everyone's benefit. Will she do the same? It almost kind of harks back to Sansa's question that she asked of John, like, you know, did you bend the knee to protect the North or because you loved her? So yeah. I think mm. he's going to have to weigh those up. And like, I mean, if he does say, here, love, I'm actually king. Um, <laughs> and also you're my aunt. Um, yeah. She's gonna be like, yeah, will you bend it in your already? So, good luck. I didn't even think of the ant aspect. He didn't, they didn't seem get to react. That into the way it's like, I mean, he had oh, a lot to take in aunt. with no. like hearing about who his true mother and father were. But at no point was he like, oh, I'm buying the aunt now. Yeah. Like, he never, no one made, did like, the. I wasn't expecting that much conflict in that everyone talking to John is kind of being like, why did you bend the knee? Like, it could. It feels like this season is gonna spend a bit of time spending mm -hmm. like which of those two is rightfully on the Iron Throne and yeah, which one's going to yeah. get it. Yeah, because what do you think he's going to do with this information now? I mean, I'd imagine the second episode he'll have to say it to Daenerys because time is of the essence, you know? Um, and how will Daenerys react to this, to finding yeah. out she's not actually the true heir to the throne? But on the plus side, she's not the only Targaryen left in the world. Yeah. She's not alone, but also how will that power struggle play out between I think she's so strong them? though that she would not submit to him 
Yeah. Say, I, but also, I don't know if he has any interest in any kind of claim to the Iron Throne anyway. But he never did. And yeah. he always been like, oh, I don't want to be on the throne, I don't want to be on the throne. But like continuously, it's sort of signposting the fact that he probably will. Yeah. But he is, essentially, he was made King of the North, so well, he wasn't a throne of sorts. Well, that's the thing. He's like, at the start of the episode, it was like, why did you bend the knee? And like, he was like, titles aren't important. Yeah. yeah. I think it might, like, if for some reason the whole Night King stuff, if they defeat the Night King by episode four, then five and six will be about, you know, who gets to sit in the iron throne. Like say yeah. right now, he doesn't care. Yeah, like as you say, like you know, the people arguing over titles and stuff like the Sansas and all that. Like sure, it's the way at the end of the last season when they went to get the white from beyond the wall to prove to everyone the danger. Mm. Sure, all the heads in Winterfell they haven't seen. That. They're essentially yeah as ignorant of that as everyone else was before they saw it. Yeah. But also yeah. even like they spent a good bit of time in the last season talking about how do you remember when they were at the dragon pit, like John is kinda honest to a fault and stuff. So like technically what he should do is not tell her that he has any kind of claim to the throne and just see how things pan out, but I think he probably just will in the John next episode. John is so honest, though, yeah. too, folks, he said. He will, Weird, have to tell, to tell you, like, yeah. Yeah, just straight away. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, actually, uh, one of the lads said something there. About 10 minutes ago, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but again, the, the fact that that was immediately preceded by Sam, who, for my money, was the best actor in the episode. By oh, really? Like, yeah. he, he was just after finding out that his father and brother were after being killed by Daenerys. And then he goes off, and just before he told John that he was the king, and I think finding out about Daenerys killing his family was the thing that pushed yeah, he's him actually to go doing tell it John. out of hate or John something. John was like, "Were you avoiding me all this time?" And he was like, "No, but he was." <laughs> he was, and <laughs> it was probably because he knew he had to confront this. But as soon as he found out that Daenerys had done that, he was like, "Now I have to tell him." Yeah, he was like, yeah. "That's what pushed him." And he, he went and he told John, and John was like, "Didn't know." So yeah. I think like yeah. that could be a bit of a crack in the trust that John yeah. has for Daenerys as well. Yeah, and that's yeah. the other thing, which is like, can it actually work out in terms of like, we've kind of seen both sides of the coin in that like, they, there's incest relationships in the show. It's kind of frowned upon. I know like, didn't Cersei want to rule with Jaime? She was like, let's yeah, just tell yeah. everyone or whatever. Yeah. I don't know if that would go down with two Targaryens or whatever. No, but then like it was, I mean, it has totally changed in tone. That season one, it was like incest. Uh, and season seven, we're like, incest? But they're sound though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But they're meant yeah. for each other. Um, now the opening episode had so, so many parallels with the very first opening episode of Game of Thrones season one. And Owen, I believe you want to run through them now. I certainly do. <laughs> All right, check it out. The opening scene of this episode with Jon and Daenerys arriving in Winterfell completely mirrors the pilot when the Baratheons last arrived. The long-awaited reunion between Jon and Arya at the Heart Tree really resembled Ned and Catelyn meeting there. When Jon last sees his dad Ned, he tells him, the next time we meet, we'll talk about your mother. And when Jon finally finds out about his mother, it's in front of Ned's tomb, with Ned's statue in the background. This important scene in the crypt between John and Sam also resembles Ned and Robert meeting in front of Lyanna's statue in the pilot. Both episodes have the White Walkers leaving out a gory set of mutilated limbs as a way of sending a message. In the pilot, John gets a direwolf. In this episode, he gets a dragon. The closing scene of both episodes is Bran and Jamie, but this time it's Jamie that looks scared. Ooh, what's gonna happen? Oh, and thanks so much for that. Brilliant. Uh, guys, the episode also had so many reunions. So many that I'm going to list them all off, Tons and then of. you can tell me what your favourite one was. But we had the very beginning, which was John and Bran. Then we had John and Sansa. John and Sam later on. Yeah. John and Aya. Oh my god, yeah. Aya and the Hound. Aya and Gendry. Tyrion and Sansa. Theon and Yara. Tormund and Dolores Ed. And of course, the very end, which was Jamie and Bran. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dave, what was your favourite reunion of them all? I think... Like a lot of the reunions, I would say were kind of a bit of a wink to fan service, which I'm not a huge, ironically, fan of. Yeah. Um, I think the most kind of organic one was probably Dolores and uh, Dolores Ed and Tormund. I thought mm -hmm. that was a really funny reunion. It kind of cracked the whole, you know, somber tone that was going yeah. so far. But I think just because of the quality of Sam's acting, I think Sam and John that took took the biscuit for me. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. What about um, you? Um? I, I was gonna say I really liked uh, Tyrion and Sansa reuniting for the first time since the Purple Wedding. You're like, oh my god, class. Yeah, yeah. Um, but after hearing it there, it has to be Jamie and Bran. Like, yes. That's pure pilot stuff where, like, you know, 
the last time I saw you, I threw you out of a window. And yeah. I just love We've like... We've all been there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can kind Classic. of tell. I almost thought Brian was going to break into a smile or something because he's just so like... None of that stuff matters. I don't care that you broke my legs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like. But of course, Jamie, because I, mean, I was trying to wonder that as well, if Jamie would know that he was still alive. But I suppose he probably wouldn't know that he was still alive. Or certainly wouldn't be expecting him to be there as the welcome I think wagon. there were times after he became sane where he was like, showing signs that he was grateful that Bran survived. Yeah, you know, yeah. For all his evils. And of course, like as much as Jamie did do that awful thing in the opening episode, he sort of has paid the price oh, and come on this huge, arc, yeah, know, yeah, such an arc for his character. He did lose his hand, essentially, and was captured by the Starks for about, I don't know, three seasons? Yeah. That went on forever. But I mean, even like, even the end of the last season showed him like basically turning away from Cersei and choosing soundness. Yeah. So I think he's going to be one of the main good characters. In the yeah. Movie. I think with Brando, the way he had earlier in the episode said, oh, just waiting for an old friend. And then like, it obviously turned out that that was Jamie. I feel like, like, come on now, like you can't, you're either Bran or you're the three-eyed raven. He, yeah. He flip-flops. I'm like, you know, pick a side. I so think he's like maybe one or the other. 10% Bran, 90% <laughs> Three-Eyed Raven. Yeah, I mean, he's not Bran. He's, he's like, shy he's not parties, though, but I think anyway. he knows who Bran is and the person that Bran is to all these other people. Yeah. So it would be interesting in that, like, he is, he knows when he sees Jamie that Jamie is the person who put him in a wheelchair. Oh, I get yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, get, I get that. But like, then why did he say like the weight and an old friend? It's like all episode, he's like, I'm the three-eyed raven. He's a and sassy then it's like, raven. What are you doing there? He's like, wait for the one. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> see. What was, was your favorite? Yeah. Uh, my favorite was definitely, oh, it had to be John and Aya. Oh, like, yeah. Meeting stop, at the yeah. tree. That was phenomenal. Um, and that was like Again, a they seven seen seasons each other in the since waiting. The pilot, yeah. Like. Um, I think it's still, my favorite was probably John and Sansa reuniting way back when, about two seasons ago. I think that was the first kind of Stark's reunion. But so Aya and John meeting up was beautiful and lovely. And they have yeah. this like, you know, very close friendship um, in the first season. Uh, so yeah, that was that was lovely, you know. And also Aya kind of sta standing up for Sansa when, you know, John was saying like, oh, Sansa's not too into Daenerys. And she was yeah. like, Sansa's the smartest person I know. Yeah. Um, that's also interesting about Sansa as well, because she kind of, has become the she smartest the Lady person. Of yeah, whatever, like she's yeah, had so exactly. much time around Cersei, so much time around Littlefinger, so much time around really smart but devious people. Yeah. But yeah, yeah so she's one to watch, I yeah, think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so we know we've had a sneak teaser of what episode two is going to bring. Mm. And from what we can see so far, that there is, of course, a brand for Jamie to face, but it's actually Daenerys Targaryen who will be the one he really has to come up yeah. against because he is the one who murdered her. He's the Kingslayer. Yeah, yeah. he's the Kingslayer. So it was her father, right? Wasn't mm -hmm. it? That was ultimately, oh God, I hope that's yeah. right. Now it is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that, it'll be interesting to see um, how that goes down. But what are you foreseeing for this episode two? What are your predictions? Well, I think we talked about how we couldn't confirm what the name of the episode was, but we don't think it's going to be the huge Winterfell battle quite next episode. No. So I think, I suppose it's just going to be a little bit more building up and, oh, I don't know, there's going to be a load more chats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I <laughs> That's think, my huge insight. Yeah. Dave, what do you think? I think having seen in the trailer for episode two where Tormund is talking to John, I think I wouldn't be surprised to see someone like Dolores said, bite the bullet to the White Walkers on the way or something like that. There'd I don't be, think that's that even enough. There'll be something yeah. of like, oh, I'll pull them off or this kind of thing that yeah, Tom yeah. and a few more will get there. Uh, but I think the whole Jamie thing, it's just going to be like, ah, you're rubbish. And then he'll be like, yeah, I'm sorry. And then they'll be like, yeah, we can fight. He's definitely going to end up being yeah, a full yeah. I mean, they're not going like, to lose any fighters. They're not going to like execute him because that yeah. would be, yeah. again, going to the whole petty thing that like Jon Snow was like, yeah. here, lads. We have to fight them. We yeah. Really cop on. And like the other thing was, there was a good bit of this episode spent talking about like northern politics or whatever, all the different little houses and how they're aligned. Absolutely. With them. So yeah. Yeah. Maybe there'll be some more of that. I don't know. Yeah, there could be. I mean, I think they would necessarily. I mean, again, about the pace of the Night King and the army, like they're going to want to get on with that. We know episode three is the big battle, so I'd imagine episode two is kind of just be like the absolute lead up to it. Maybe yeah. it's going to have yeah. some cliffhanger for the battle. We don't yeah. have time for that. Yeah, there's no time. There's yeah. no time. Um, and of course, we've run out of time here as well, but there's so much that we didn't get to talk about. We didn't get to talk about Kyburn issuing Joffrey's crossbow yeah. to Bronn to kill yeah. the Lannisters. Which... As if Bronn's going to kill Tyrion, like, why would you say I know. it was me? I don't know. Yeah, totally not going to do that. Cersei didn't get her elephants. 
So obviously the budget's big for Game of Thrones, yeah. but it's, it's not, it's <laughs> not quite that them. big. And those amazing opening credits, which took a massive overhaul as well. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Love to talk about that more. And of course that jump scare, which was one of the best jump scares of the entire thing, when the little kid in the background, the lumber kid. Umber, Ned Umber. Um, yeah, I actually screamed for that one, so that was unexpected. <laughs> yeah. And how funny the episode was. I actually, it was very witty and sharp, one liner wise. It was a bit cheeky, yeah, yeah exactly. Like, yeah, yeah, I felt there was more laughs in this episode than normal though, but maybe also, that's because- I want to know what that symbol was burned into the wall. We've seen that with the White Walkers a good few times. Yeah, so that's come up but, yeah, dark. throughout. Um, there'll be loads of this anyway up on entertainment.e dissecting every last detail so please check it out on this web address here which will cleverly appear when we're doing sure. it. <laughs> yeah. um, that's it from us. Catch us again next week after episode two.